Greetings, people who really like accordions. Today I'm going to walk you through the six steps used in the system that I've been working on over the many years. It's called the Stradella Reed Recognition System. At least that's what I call it for now. I change my mind every five minutes. Okay, Stradella Reed Recognition System. People who really want to write music with precise balance and, and, and really know their tones and or, or know want to know what's going on inside the accordion will be interested in this. The rest of the people won't care. But anyway, so so let's get right to it. Step one. In step one we recognize or you could say identify which tones are called for by each button that you press. For the chord we wish to study today Uh, that's the C minor 11. Oh, here it is. The C minor 11, which means you press the C bass, the B flat major chord button, and the E flat major chord button. Okay? So, that's really it for step one. You just... Determining... Oh, no, that ain't it. You're just, sorry, you're just determining which tones are called for when you press the button. The three buttons, and these are the tones that are called for. All right? Now, you see these tones have letter names, and that's all you know, the letter name. So, you don't know enough, but that is step one, and step one is done. Oh, and if you don't know which tones the buttons call for, you can't remember. Remember, there's always that handy, handy chart that I showed you many times. You can find it on the internet or somewhere. I always use this chart. Now, step two is you have to figure out which exact tones they are. In other words. Which octave do they fall in? You know, what's the, the pitch of the tone? The pitch should be determined by which octave it falls in. So we use our handy reed set chart, right? They just ignore that soprano reed set. First of all, my accordion doesn't have one, and even if it did, I wouldn't use it. It's just about worthless. So anyway, so we're doing this chord study, and we're using the register, the ACTB register. It's up here. The ACTB register. The one we use in my other uh, videos. 5A and 5B. So we look at our chart. And we can now determine which exact tones are being called for. Because a tone has to have a letter name and a number name. That's a complete name for a tone. Letter name and a number name. For example, let's say a button called for... Um, in the contralto reed set, it called for a G3, a G tone. Well, what we would know in the contralto reed set, that G has to fall within this range. So it has to be a G3. Can't be a G4, that's outside the range. See? Can't be a G2, that's too low. So you see, a tone has to have a letter name, a letter in its name, and a number. That's important. This is uh, the system, the uh, society... Excuse me, the Acoustical Society of America devised this octave and pitch identification system. Almost everybody in America is using it, and probably elsewhere in the world. Okay, so in step two then, if you do what I just showed you, you will now know the, the you will now know all the tones that are called for when you hit those buttons, excuse me, all the tones that are that are activated or accessed when you do that. I'm trying to hold this straight. There you go. Because you looked at that read set chart and you saw that the buttons called for tones. Now you found out where those tones sit. Some of them are in the contralto, 
reset, summon the alto, summon the tenor, summon the bass, blah, blah, blah. You'll figure this out on your own. You have to put a little work into it. It takes a few minutes. It takes a little time. So you got that. Now, once that's done, that's step two. That's done. Then you have to start your graph. You have to start your little chart of your graph. You can use graph paper, whiteboard, whatever. Now you have to, to denote, you have to list your tones from the lowest tone on the left to the highest tone, the highest pitch tone on the right. The lowest pitch tone on the left and the highest pitch tone on the right. Just like you look at a piano keyboard, you see the keys with the lowest key on the left and the highest key on the right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with that, the piano. So, you've completed three steps. Step one, just find... Oh, sorry, I lost my paper. Step one is simply, just a quick, quick review. Just find out what tones and buttons call for. Then step two, find out... what ranges they're in, right? And, and then you'll end up, of course, with your complete list on a piece of paper or whatever. Sorry, that's crooked. There we go. Now, step four to me, personally, is really the fun part. Now, all we have to do in step four is identify the button shared duplicates. In other words, you see here the B flat major chord button and the E flat major chord button both will access the B flat 3 and the contralto reed set. That's a C contralto. And you see over here that both those major chord buttons will access the B flat 4 alto uh, reed set and the B flat 4 uh, in the alto reed set. Here, two different buttons access the same read. That's called a button share duplicate. Duplicate. Now, when two of these, when these are joined by uh, the red line, this acts as one unit, and this acts as one unit. When you have that connector line, that means they act as one unit, right? Then step five is fun. Step five is easy, and it but it's fun. Now you identify the intragroup duplicates. So you see here. This C may excuse me, this C bass button is calling for this a C, but in the contralto read set there's one, and there's also one in the alto read set. Hold on, I'm finding my paper. Okay. You see, if that C bass button calls for a C in the contralto read set. You see it has to fall in between in this range. So it has to be a C4. And then if it's calling for um, a C in the alto read set, you see it has to be a C4. It can't be anything else. Now, if, if you find this confusing or find any of the steps confusing, go back, watch it again, pause the video, do whatever you need to do. Because it makes perfect sense. Once you get it, it makes perfect sense and it's a beautiful thing. Okay. That was step five. So you see step four and five, we, we, we indicated our step four, the uh, button shared duplicates, step five, the intra group duplicates, and just like with the button shared, the intra group, when they connect, when they're connected, even though they're two different reads, okay? Even though two different reads are involved with one intra group duplicate, they count as one unit, one unit, okay? Now, step six, step six, you can, you can use one of two procedures to determine how many tones at specific pitches are being heard. When I say heard, I mean heard by people with normal hearing, not somebody with super hearing, as I mentioned before, just like a person with normal hearing. Procedure one's the easy one, okay? Procedure one, all you do is take on your graph, you take a, a pen or pencil, and you draw a line, draw lines to separate specific tones 
at specific pitches. You see here, this is a C2, C3, G3. Oh, there's two B3s, but they're still just, they're just one tone at a specific pitch. So they go in this same group here. That's what the lines do. The lines give you that separation. Uh, the C4, D4, even though there's duplicates, doesn't matter. E4, and like E flat 4 is a specific tone. It's, it's all, it's just there by itself. Um, F4, separate, separate, separate. So what you determine here is when you play this chord, you're actually, if you have normal hearing, you're hearing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tones. Okay? Uh, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, what an idiot. <laughs> I said nine. So it's ten tones. Now that's that's the the isolate tones method. Isolating tones of a specific pitch. Okay? The other way, which is also very fun, I, I kind of think I invented this. I, I don't know of anybody else doing this. May, maybe there's somebody out there, but I couldn't find it on YouTube. I couldn't find it on Google. I couldn't find it anywhere. The other method in step six, that's that's the procedure two in step six. If you, don't, you can do it the easy way, but if you don't want to, you want to have some mathematical fun, you count up all all the reads called for they're 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 theoretical there's 16 you count it one two three four five six excuse me start again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen sixteen theoretical reads in this chord study here c minor 11. now we subtract all right this is the subtraction method so we subtract button share duplicates and and remember these two tones, they're the same tone, act as one unit. These two act as one unit. So you have two button shared duplicates. You subtract them. Uh, two actual, uh, excuse me, two button shared duplicates from 16 theoretical reads, and you get 14 actual reads. Now you're down to 14. Now you look at your intragroup duplicates. There's four. But remember, when they're hooked together with that, that pretty green line, they, they act as one unit. So we have four. One, two, three, four. We subtract four from that actual read set, and we get the same answer that we had when we did the simple line method, the isolate tones method. We get ten actual tones are heard. So either way, you're going to get the right answer. The remainder is the actual tones heard by a person with kind of normal hearing. And I know between the three videos, it sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook. But in this video, I just tried to show you clearly the six steps and how it works. And, and I decided to go ahead and do these three videos because later on, when I get back to the five finger thing, I'm going to show you how it fits in. Because when I'm, when I'm going over songs and chords, I'm going to stop and show you little things so that you can actually develop a, a mind for read recognition. And that's it. That's uh, Stradella Read Recognition. It's a fair, it's a fair name. To, in other words, you're acknowledging the reads with a show of appreciation. I could, I could have called it the Stradella Read Determination System, but I just think I'll go with recognition for now. For me, I, I guess it's a little bit personal. Two months ago to the day, the man who took really good care of my accordion, he died. Frank, Frank Tomasic. Frank Tomasic, the master accordion technician. Um, Frank was a, a better man than I'll ever be. I'll never be able to pick up my accordion without thinking of Frank. That's just the way it is. So... Thanks for listening again, and uh, I'll try to come back with some more five-finger goodies. Again, thanks for listening. Good night.